I am going to show you how to make your own circuit boards. So let's begin. So to start out we're gonna need a couple of things. First of all, obviously we need the circuit board itself. This is a copper PCB with a photosensitive layer uh, on top and it has this blue film on it to protect it from any light exposure. Second, we need some developer. This is sodium hydroxide and it comes in this fine granulate. It could come in other forms as well, like tablets. But yeah, it's generally very cheap and easy to get and not dangerous to work with. Next, we need some etchant and I'm using ferric chloride solution. This is a one liter bottle and it's this brown liquid that's odorless and also quite cheap and easy to get and not very dangerous to work with as well. Next, we will need a drill and I'm using this hand drill and we need the fitting uh, drill bits. Mine are 0.8 millimeters thick. For the developing process, we will need a source of UV light and it doesn't really matter what you get as long as it emits UV in any form. Um, so there's this uh, nail a uh, varnish drying thing that's pretty cheap that you can get uh, or any other uh, bulb that emits UV light like uh, this for example or I'm using a LED strip um, which also works as you can see later um, you could also expose it to sunlight although that's not very precise so it probably will work, but I wouldn't suggest it. Right, moving on to the thing we're gonna start out working with, and that is transparent film. We're gonna uh, print our circuits onto it. And you have to be kind of careful to get the right kind, because depending on your printer, you have to uh, get the right one. Um, and I kind of messed it up. I uh, bought laser printer film and I actually have a inkjet printer. Uh, but it still kind of worked. The only thing was that I had to be very careful not to touch the ink because it wouldn't dry properly and it would smear if I touched it. The other way around I wouldn't suggest trying. So if you have a laser printer don't use uh, inkjet uh, film because it could melt inside the printer and destroy it. Okay, I printed my circuits onto the film and next we have to deal with a, a very common issue that can also arise if you use the correct uh, kind of film. And that is that there are a couple of spots where there isn't enough ink to totally block all the light. So what we can do is either we can print the whole thing twice and then layer it on top of each other to get better blockage. Or what I am doing is I'm using this permanent marker to just paint over those spots. After I'm done doing that, the last thing to do is to cut out the individual circuits. Okay, we're all done. Let's move on. Next up, we have to cut our board into the right dimensions for our circuits. I'm putting the transparent circuit sheet on the board to mark where I need to cut and then I'm using the back of the razor blade, so the blunt side, to carve a groove into the board. Uh, the more times you do that, the easier it's gonna be to separate the pieces later. Now I'm marking the other side.
And this time I'm using the sharp blade, uh, the sharp side of the razor blade to cut through the blue film and the copper. Next, I'm putting the board between two solid surfaces, like my cutting board and the tabletop here, and I'm breaking the pieces apart. After I did the same process for all of my boards, we are done with all the preparations and we can move on to the next part. The first thing that we're gonna do is to create our development solution. So we are gonna take 10 grams of sodium hydroxide and add it to 1 liter of tap water, giving us a 1% solution. Now we're gonna take our circuit board and remove the protective film. Next we're gonna take our transparent film with our circuit on it and put it onto our board with the ink facing the copper. To hold it in place I'm using a little bit of adhesive tape. Next up, we're gonna need our UV light. This is a, a UV chamber that's normally used for 3D printing and it is a LED strip inside a paint canister. If you have any other source of UV light, just put your board underneath um, that in close proximity and expose it for around four minutes. In the meantime, I prepared this glass dish and I put about one centimeter of our development solution into it. When the four minutes are up, take out the board, remove the transparent film and put it into your glass dish. Now swirl it around, as you see here, and you're gonna see the lines developing. This footage is completely real-time, so it's not gonna take very long. And after it's done, take it out and rinse it off with tap water. And this is how it should look. That's it for the development process. Moving on. All right, so I prepared another glass dish with about one centimeter high of ferric chloride solution in it. I'm putting the board inside and swirling it around again, uh, the same way as I did when I was developing. Um, but yeah, now we're etching. So um, this process is gonna take a lot longer. Um, at least 10 minutes. Uh, but after 10 minutes or so, it looked like that. Uh, so if it looks like this, it's not done yet. So I'm, I put it back and uh, gave it another go. And it, in total, it took over 20 minutes. But afterwards, it looked good and I rinsed it off again with tap water 
There's just a bit of copper around the edges there. Um, but as long as the circuit is fully separated, it's not really a problem, but I'm gonna clean everything up a bit later. Next, I'm doing the other two circuits. So this is the big board that we can see here. And here it is done. Nice, so we're all done. Last step is to put the etchant back into the bottle because you can just reuse it. By the way, the sodium hydroxide solution you can just flush down the toilet. Alright, let's move on to the final step. In order for our circuit to work properly, we have to make sure that there isn't any residual copper left that is connecting tracks uh, that aren't supposed to be connected. So if we find something like that, we have to fix it. Uh, in my case, it happened here in the middle of the main board. And we have to break this connection now. We have a couple of options to do that. Uh, I could cut it with a razor blade or sand it away with sanding paper. Or I have this uh, engraving tool here with a spinning tip and I can just uh, carve it away with that. The important thing here obviously is to break the connection. Um, if it doesn't look perfect, that doesn't really matter. But you have to make sure that there isn't any copper left that's connecting the two tracks. If the opposite happened and you accidentally broke a connection or too much copper got etched away, you can make connections by soldering on some copper cable. But that did not happen in my case. Okay, I cleaned up all my circuits so I can move on to drilling. I'm using this cordless drill and my circuit board design has 0.8 millimeter holes, so I'm using 0.8 millimeter drill bits. Although it will work to drill like this, I totally don't recommend it because uh, the drill bits break very easily. If you have access to a drill press like this, then use this instead. Depending on your circuit, this process can take quite a long time. For me, to drill all of the holes in all of the three circuit boards took about one hour. And with that, our circuit board is finished and ready to be populated with components. Uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful. If you have any question, just leave a comment. Uh, other than that, I wish you happy building and see you soon.